Shenzhen, the special economic zone in China. It was where China's economic reforms started 40 years ago. Each year, top Western business schools would organize China tour, which always included Shenzhen as a stop to try to find the secrets to China's economic success. People normally visit Shenzhen for business reasons. But in this video, I'd like to give you some different travel ideas. I'll visit some old houses that were built centuries ago and will touch the face of Shenzhen that's not talked about in business school cases. Hello, I'm Yan Yan. I'm in the suburb of Shenzhen, Guangdong province, in front of an ancient house of more than 200 years old. In the 18th century, a group of people known as Hakka migrated to Shenzhen. Those Hakka were lucky. They prospered here and built their traditional castle-like houses in Shenzhen. Today, let's visit their houses and learn the story of Hakka migrating to Shenzhen. Shenzhen is the area to the north of Hong Kong. It is in the border area of Cantonese culture and Hakka culture, as reflected in Hakka wood houses in this area. The Hakka houses here adopted Cantonese style. In each of the four corners of the house, there is a turret. And the turret has Cantonese style gables. If you go to ancient villages in the Pearl River Delta, you'll see rows and rows of houses with this kind of gables. Atop each gable, there is a halberd, strengthening the image of a formidable castle. Turrets are taller than the rest of the house. There are small windows slash peepholes on the wall. The entire house and its surroundings could be monitored from the four turrets. This is inside one of the turrets. Each floor is divided into three rooms. Turrets could be used to store food and important supplies. They are also spacious enough for residents to hide during battles. Hakka wood houses in Shenzhen are evolved from the Hakka Weilong House in Meizhou in northeast Guangdong province. The central house, the wing buildings, and the way section at the back. The way section in Meizhou is usually an arc. But in Shenzhen, it became flat. Compared with Hakka Weilong houses in Meizhou, the Hakka Wood houses in Shenzhen has an extra beauty in the front, which makes the house a full enclosure. This is the backyard of the house. The building has been turned into a modern art studio. There were two symmetric western style buildings in this house. One was burned down by Japanese invaders in the 1940s but we still get to see the other one. The unit at the end of this side alley has a western style. This was not in the initial design. It was built in the early 20th century by descendants from Canada. This is another unique feature of this Hakka Wood House, the combination of Hakka style and the western style. 
In 2007, a professor proposed the concept "coastal haka" to refer to haka in Shenzhen and Hong Kong. Coincidentally, when I visited another haka warehouse in Shenzhen, the professor was present in an event held outside the house in celebrating haka heritage in Shenzhen and the 450th anniversary of Xinyan County. Let's first enjoy the haka mountain song performance. Four hundred fifty years ago, in fifteen seventy three, Xinyan County was established. It covered most of today's Shenzhen and the entire Hong Kong. Back at that time, there was little record of Hakka living in Xinyan County. A few decades later, the Ming Dynasty in China was replaced by Manchu-led Qing Dynasty. And the Manchus were facing strong resistance from a group of Han Chinese who used the Taiwan Island as a base. In order to cut off the supply of food and other necessities of this group, the Qing government ordered the residents living within up to 25 kilometers from the coast to be evacuated inland, leaving the coast of the country empty. The brutal policy that lasted for 20 years caused a great casualty to coastal residents, and large amount of land was abandoned. After the policy was abolished, the Qing government recruited people to the coast to reclaim the land there. Many Hakka living in the hilly area of north and northeast Guangdong Province started migrating to the coast of Shenzhen and Hong Kong. It was during this process that more Hakka discovered the plain on the east of the Pearl River Delta. Those of you who have never heard of Hakka before might wonder who they are. Sunny mountain sounds and living houses like castles, they seem a little different. But Hakka are Han Chinese. Due to historic reasons, they migrated to the hilly area in South China around a millennium ago. Living in the mountains and interacting with mountainous indigenous people, Hakka developed their unique culture and heritage. Despite of that, the Han Chinese tradition and values are well preserved in this group. In an earlier video, I generalized the five stages of Hakka's migration, and migrating to Shenzhen was the last stage within China. As an agrarian people, they were looking for fertile land. In 1758, a man migrated with his family from Xinyi of Meizhou to today's Shenzhen. After starting their wine brewing business and having earned some money, this family started building their house. It's this Hakka Wood House, which might be the largest one in Shenzhen. The house was built in two stages. The section in the center was built first. It has that typical layout of Hakka Wood Houses in Shenzhen. This is the house of Huang Clan in Shenzhen. This is the house of the Xiao Clan in Shenzhen. They are almost identical. You might have noticed the common structure in these houses. There is a watchtower atop the building at the back. The structure was not in the Hakka Weilong houses in Meizhou. The purpose of the watchtower was similar to the turrets. 
residents could monitor the house from the watchtower, and they could also hide in the watchtower had enemies breached the house. Houses in Shenzhen adopted carefully style. No matter if the unit in the way section or the wing building, it's not a single room anymore. It becomes an independent unit with individual courtyard. The central hall, the side rooms, and the wing rooms. This is so airy and convenient. The ancestor of the Luo clan in this house was from Xining of Meizhou. In an earlier video, I happened to have visited a Hakka Weilong house built by the Luo clan in Xining. It's a typical Hakka Weilong house. In the Weilong house, each section is consisted of single rooms, not a complex with courtyard. But after Hakka migrated to Shenzhen, they adopted the design with private courtyards. It's much more convenient for each family in the clan to have their private unit than just having one or two rooms. The house was expanded decades after the first part was finished, and four more turrets were added to the outer section. Let's look at the extension part now. This expanded yard was the living space. There are one, two, three, four, five rows of houses, and each house has its individual courtyard. The western extension is a garden. The northern extension has another way section. This house definitely reminds me of Hakka Weilong house. I'm not if you can tell, but the backyard is not flat, it's bulging. And there is a gentle slope here. The watchtower on the outer way section was severely damaged, and there's a story behind that. There used to be another watchtower atop this outer way. As you can see, it's burned down. In 1943, a group of Japanese broke into this house, but the house was empty. The Luo clan went hiding into this watchtower. Not able to break into this watchtower, the Japanese was like, okay. They set fire and left. The Japanese thought for those trapped in the burning watchtower, there would be no way to escape. But obviously, they didn't have enough knowledge of the house. The entire house is linked by a narrow track on the roof. The track is hidden behind the sloping roof. After the Japanese left, the residents were quickly evacuated from the track on the roof to the turrets in the corner and left from the turrets. Living in a hostile environment, Hakka had centuries of battling experience. They put that experience in houses they built. Hakka houses might not be the most comfortable house to live, but they are formidable enough to save lives in wars. It is during the war time that one would appreciate that they live in a Hakka house. I'm standing on the track on the top of the Hakka Ward house. Actually, the entire Hakka Ward house is connected by the track. It's an important part in the defense system. This is called Dada Wall. It's also on the Great Wall. And look at that. That's a turret. But doesn't it also look like the watchtower on the Great Wall? My dad once proposed an idea. I can't agree more. He said, Hakka Wall House is the Great Wall in the current level. 
It represents defending, not invasion. And that's our value, the Chinese value. This is a photo of some of the descendants of the Luo clan from abroad reuniting at their ancestral house. From their faces, we can tell they're from all over the world. After the Opium War in the 19th century, Hakka in Shenzhen started migrating to other parts of the world to seek better life. Many of them went to Malaysia. Some went to the Pacific Islands, such as Tahiti. Some went even further away to the Caribbean. This is the photo of the grocery store a descendant of the Luo clan opened in Jamaica. This is the garden in the backyard of this house. Isn't it awesome? That's why I said Hakka prospered in Shenzhen. They were never able to build such a big house in the hilly area they used to live. Next time when you get a chance to visit Shenzhen, I highly recommend you come here and check out Hakka's house in Shenzhen. Thanks for watching the video. Let's end this video in the beautiful Hakka mountain sounds. I'm Yan Yan. Subscribe to my channel. I'll show you the faces of China that you probably wouldn't see elsewhere. Well.